you tomorrow. Good. Yeah. 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 Well, you did it. You took my one chance at happiness and crushed it. Crushed it into little tiny bite-sized pieces. I really had expected better of you people. I guess I'm a loser for that too. So thanks. Thanks for nothing. You're welcome. Can you guys believe at the time of this video being uploaded, it's been two years since Verse Retrospector came out? Can you also believe that part two isn't out yet? I know, right? For an FNF mod that's admittedly kind of a ridiculous wait time, uh, sure it got two updates, but the last update was a whole year ago. So why isn't part two out yet? What happened? In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened and why it's not out yet to the best of my ability and talk about the community that broke me. Quick disclaimer here, this isn't to shit on the FNF community or anything like that. To be honest, I haven't touched an FNF mod since Among Us v4 update in January of 2023. So I don't even know what the state of the community is anymore. So please take everything I say with a grain of salt. Things have probably changed for the better now that the community is smaller. Uh, a lot of the stuff that happened to me regarding this video was in late 2021, early 2022. Also, when you hear me say community in this video, I'll be primarily talking about the modding and Twitter community, as that's part of the community I have the most experience with. Also, I do apologize if this video comes off as victimizing. It's not my intention. Uh, it's just that so many bad things have happened to me in this community that I kind of wanted to share them all. So I apologize if it comes off of that. I got into Friday Night Funkin' because I saw some really cool eye-catching fan art on Twitter in January of 2021. I ended up checking out the mod for myself. Uh, around this time, the Mommy Marist week had just released, which was week four. Um, I loved the music so much that I immediately opened up my music program and began to work on a Dad Battle remix. This would spearhead me into the community itself. The YouTube algorithm blew the video up, and I still loved the OST, so I continue to make more remixes of the base game. Uh, fast forward to late February of that same year, a demo for an FNF mod called Verse Witty came out. Starving for content because I loved the base game so much, I decided to give it a shot. I fell in love with this character and universe, and ideas immediately began forming in my head for my own mod. Um, this was also around the time that week 5 and 6 came out. I ended up doing sort of a let's play format for week six, and a lot of people seem to really like that. Um, anyways, moving on. Uh, shortly after the release of the witty mod, uh, more OC mods came out. Uh, things like Garcello from Smoke Em Out Struggle, Sarvente and Rav from Mid Fight Masses, and Hex from, well, Verse Hex. Uh, I fell in love with all these mods, and it motivated me so much that this is when I started to get really serious about making my own mod for my mascot slash Sona. I was really into Binding of Isaac at the time, so I thought turning Retro into one of the seven deadly sins, I know, Binding of Isaac didn't invent that. I ended up having to create a few more characters to fill in the other sin spots, so I ended up doing just that. I also ended up forming a small team and I commissioned the sprite artist. However, things were kind of stagnant for a couple months or so until my close friend who knew programming, he goes by an awkward Arcanine, uh, he offered to program for Verse Retro. It was at this point that I ended up forming a small team known as the Verse Retro team. I know, very creative name. I hired a few more people and we got to work on part one. April 2021, a mod by BB Panzu named Verse Sky comes out. The art looks charming and the music seems catchy. Still starving for more OC mod content, I boot up recording software and get to work. Everything goes well, the mod is fun, and I upload the video. I title the video, This Chick Is Insane, because that's just how clickbait titles work on YouTube. Fast forward a few days later, I end up getting some really odd comments. A few of the comments were saying that I was weird for calling Sky a chick in the title of my video. Now, I grew up with old cartoons, so maybe the term has changed over the years, and maybe it's more derogatory now, I have no idea. But according to Google, the definition is informal, a young woman. The definition of a girl is, you guessed it, a young woman. In my mind, chick equaled girl. If I'm being honest, there was nothing weird about it. However, those YouTube comments started to point it out more and more and more. 
I caved and eventually changed the title of the video to This Girl is Insane. This was my first red flag with the FNF community. Though at the time, I didn't really think anything too much of it. I just thought the whole situation was a bit weird and kind of unnecessary. Uh, moving on a couple months later, progress on Verse Retro was going really great. Uh, the team was cooperating to the best of their ability. Assets were being made left and right. Everyone was motivated. It was amazing. Now, I'm the type of guy that doesn't believe in free work. I pay everyone that I possibly can on Verse Retro. Um, usually based on the amount of hours that they put into the mod. Naturally, programmers and animators got paid the most. Uh, however, these costs piled up a lot, um, more so than I expected. I don't even want to talk about how much that phase one to phase two scene costed. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, anyways, I go to Twitter to talk about the mod as I usually do. Because my YouTube channel is blowing up because of FNF, obviously so is my Twitter. Um, so I'm getting a lot of new followers there at the time. I ended up making a joke tweet about how I spent over a thousand dollars on my mod because I thought it'd be kind of funny to mention at the time. Um, and this is where things take a nosedive. Um, I ended up getting quote retweeted a ton. Uh, people saying things like bro paid over 1k for an FNF mod skull emoji. And I only paid $50 for insert big mod here. I tried to ignore these replies as best as I could. But at the same time, this was my passion project. So not only to see people mock it, but also make fun of me personally for paying artists for their work. <laughs> that left a huge sour taste in my mouth. Uh, side tangent, I think it's really weird how the community acted like paying artists for their work on an FNF mod was a bad thing. You should always be compensated for your work, no matter your age. There's nothing wrong with doing things for free, but it has to be a mutual agreement. I also don't think the quality of Verse Retro would have been as high if I hadn't ended up paying artists and animators. To this day, I still see people in the community get slandered for charging so much, quote unquote, for animated sprites. It's ridiculous. Anyways, this is where my disdain for the community would really start. The sky chick dilemma was something I kind of glossed over, but this was a different can of worms entirely. Naturally, I ended up deleting the tweet because I was so tired of seeing people rag on me for spending so much on an FNF mod. Um, I even saw on a 4chan post once, I was called Reckless Spender. I honestly thought that was kind of funny, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, this kind of made me a bit resentful towards the community though, um, but this wasn't even the tip of the iceberg. Uh, fast forward to August 2021. The mod is almost out and I make a few teasers. Uh, one of them was a teaser for my mascot retro second phase, Berserker Retro. I make a tweet showing his silhouette and I ask people to draw what they think he looks like. You know, just a little fun thing. However, one of the replies really stood out to me because they literally drew exactly what he looked like. Uh, this immediately caused some distrust towards my verse retro devs who weren't in my immediate friend circle. However, the person that drew over the silhouette didn't seem to leak it anywhere else to my knowledge and the mod was coming out a few weeks later anyways, so I figured keeping quiet about it was the best thing I could do, and I did. This might not seem like a horrible thing, but I'll get into why this is important later in the video. All these issues aside, it was time. The date is August 27th, 2021. After months of hard work by the team, Verse Retrospector Part 1 finally releases. The mod is met with overall pretty positive reception. A few critiques here and there, green arrows blend in with the green background, ectospasm is a bit too annoyingly hard due to the charting, and the biggest one, it being an unoptimized piece of garbage. These were all valid criticisms. However, the biggest surprise to many was a certain bonus side addition to the mod you got for completing ectospasm. Sakuroma. Where do I even begin? This is where it turns for the worst. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about Sakuroma in this video. Um, I actually have plans to make a video entirely about her in the future. But for now, all you need to know is this. Sakuroma is the sin of lust. She dons your typical hourglass female body while wearing no clothes and is very flirtatious towards pretty much anybody. She's a combination of a moth and a succubus. To get a head start on future Verse Retro updates, the team started making Sakuroma sprites early since she was a fan favorite amongst most of the team at the time. Gee, I wonder why. Anyways, a few days pass. I'm pretty happy overall with the reception. One day, I wake up to a ping from one of my Verse Retro mod devs. They show me that Verse Retrospector Part 1 has been flagged for NSFW on Game Banana. Naturally, I try to get to the bottom of this, panicking and freaking out as I usually do when I'm stressed. I eventually find out that, and I kid you not, a small group of like three to four kids 
ended up flagging the mod for NSFW because of Sakuroma. Now sure, Sakuroma was a bit suggestive in her dialogue and her poses, but I personally didn't see anything wrong with them. After all, the base game was about trying to bang your girlfriend and singing against her family to win her over. Boyfriend literally gets blue balls if you fail, which implies BF and GF bang after every song. In week six, Senpai even says, and I quote, I'll cut off your nutsack and nail it to my door. Once I saw the real reason for why the mod was flagged, I was livid. Months and months of hard work only to get flagged as NSFW just because a few kids were uncomfortable about a seductive moth and decided to mass flag it in an adult game. I also thought this was hypocritical too, considering in the FNF HD mod, uh, Mommy Mirror's idol sprite literally had her groping herself, and that was not flagged. Which, by the way, no shade to that mod. The uh, creator of that mod also agreed that it was BS, so I figured bringing that up would be uh, worth mentioning. So what did young, quote-unquote, an arrogant, hot-headed retro do as a response to this? I made a tweet, and here is what that tweet says. Not even sure what to say. I can't believe months of hard work is being held because of a few kiddos got uncomfortable when... F*** miners. This game was never meant for you. This is where the floodgates unleashed. This caught the attention of what felt like every miner in existence coming at my throat with knives and pitchforks. My ass was being beat in the quote retweets left and right. It felt like anyone that was a miner in the community assumed I was talking about every single miner in existence and applied it to themselves. Personal opinion, but I feel like this was a turning point for a lot of people who are fans of my FNF mod and mod remixes that just stopped watching my content. Because after part one, literally everything started diminishing. Subs, revenue, views, supporters, etc. Anyways, this paired with people mocking me for spending money on my mod a few months back at the time really made me realize just how young the community was. I almost felt alienated. Um, but the only other people who I knew in the community that were in their 20s were people like Band Buds, Juno Songs, Stardust Tunes, and Rec D. Of course, my own boyfriend, Camix. Trust me, being almost 30, you can absolutely tell the difference between someone closer to your age and someone who is still a teenager. Eventually, the Game Banana Twitter apologized themselves and made the mod safe for work again. I want to clarify that I do feel awful for that tweet I made. I still regret that day looking back, um, and I wonder how different things would have been if I hadn't tweeted that. It didn't feel like a victory because everything that transpired from it still affects me to this day. Uh, one miner was even so offended, they made a pretty high effort mod solely about that tweet I made. I'm not going to link it because I don't want to give it more attention than I am now by mentioning it, but it really goes to show you just how much this tweet really got under people's skins, especially kids. While I do regret making that tweet, I still stand by that games like FNF for as many sexual themes as it has should not be played by kids at all. So what did I do after this? I slept. A lot. I literally lied in bed for at least a week straight, maybe longer. The whole fiasco kind of ruined my mental health. I was even too afraid to watch Let's Players playthroughs of my mod, in case any of them had negative destructive criticism. Pair that with Verse Retro's surging popularity at the time, it was a recipe for disaster. I would try to look up fan art of Retrospector and Sakurama on Twitter, only to be met with people shitting on my mod, acting like it wasn't high effort, etc. This fueled my state of anxiety and lowered my self-confidence while raising my bitterness towards the fandom even more. However, I don't want anyone's generous gift art to go unnoticed, so I would continue searching for fan art and stuff for months to come. Kamex actually had to convince me to stop doing this, because this was actually an unintentional method of doom scrolling, which if you don't know, according to Wikipedia, is the act of spending an excessive amount of time reading large quantities of negative news online. This was especially bad because the negative news was about myself. As the months progressed, I started doom scrolling less and focused on what really made me happy, live streaming. Um, I'll get more into that later. Verse Retro Part 1's hype finally settled down and I was beginning to feel a little better. Fast forward to fall of 2021 and my good friend Bones the Skele Bunny 01 ends up making a really cool AU design of Retrospector. Verse Retro IPU is the 1.5 update for Verse Retrospector. Part 1 leaves us on a massive cliffhanger and I knew it'd take a while to make, so I wanted to create some sort of half update for the mod. This mod would be less effort than part one, but still enough to tie people over while they waited for part two. IPU stands for Infernal Paradise University and is a side AU to another AU called Friday Night Funkin' Minus. I know it can be confusing as hell, just bear with me. 
F and F minus simplified character designs based on their health bars in the game while adding some sort of twist. Skid and Pump were a puppet puppet master, Pico is a dinosaur, etc. A character designer slash friend, Bones, ended up creating a Minus version of Retrospector. He had this jock-like appearance, donning a sleeveless jacket, and he was a bit more muscular than regular Retro. As soon as I saw that, I immediately thought of having some sort of college AU. I ended up naming him Metro, Minus Retro but with an M, creative I know. Sakuroma turned into Maku and going from a more mature mother, she went to like a younger preppy version of herself. Uh, Metro was more hot headed instead of like consistently actually angry, stuff like that. They were basically the diet versions of their original sins. Anyways, trivia aside, a lot of people left after Verse Retro Part 1 on the team. Um, they were either starting school again, some of them might have left because of the Part 1 fiasco, who knows. Point is, I needed to hire more people, and that I did. I hired a couple new sprite artists, a new programmer, a new charter, so on and so forth at the start of January 2022. Things were going great, assets were being completed left and right. Since it was a smaller, less ambitious update, the team developed the mod update at a tremendous pace. I was happy to get another update out since at this time it had been 4 to 5 months since part 1's release. Then it happened. On January 30th, I got approached by one of the newer dev team members. They said, Hi Retro. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's important. They then linked me to a YouTube video. When I saw the title, my heart sank. It was titled, FNF vs. Retrospector Infernal Paradise University Leaked. The thumbnail confirmed this, showing a screenshot of the update we had never shown before anywhere else publicly. This leaker also attempted to do a couple other mods on their channel at the time, so mine was just thrown into the mix. Remember earlier when I mentioned that mysterious Zerktro silhouette tracer? Well, that paired with this leak really made me feel like someone on the team just had it out for me. Uh, after discussing it with my closer friends inside the dev group on who it could be, we still had no idea who it was. However, I did find new leads. Now, I'm going to be a little more vague here regarding the leakers. There were actually a few people that leaked this update, uh, none of which will be named because A, the person that technically started the leak wasn't even entirely their fault, but they ended up being the one I publicly called out with inaccurate evidence. Uh, and B, the other two leakers were children that spoiled a free FNF mod a few weeks early. So like, you know, me as a 29 year old man, 28 at the time, it'd be kind of silly to, you know, like, we found him folks, get him. It's really funny looking back as to why I was even so upset about this, but I still felt like it was worth sharing how I felt at the time. Because at the end of the day, I did pay a lot of money for this mod, so to have it spoiled early for people patiently waiting did sting quite a bit. This was, after all, more than just an FNF mod to me. It was my passion project, my pride and joy, my magnum opus. For the three leakers, we're just going to call them Barry, Larry, and Terry. Barry was a new programmer I hired with that new wave of people in January. I asked around a couple other notable mod makers in the community, and it turned out that Barry was sending unfinished mod assets to people in DMs so they could prove that they were on the team to other mod developers to join their mods. I don't think there was any bad intention behind this, but he ended up leaking Retro's Phase 3 design, which if you don't know is still a secret to this day. After digging on their social media page, my mind instantly made the connection that this was our IPU leaker. A few days later, I made a callout post and it was met with understandably mixed receptions. People agreed that Barry shouldn't be leaking other mod assets to show to developers, but people also agreed that I was rash in pointing fingers, which I agreed with. Uh, some even criticized me for quote-unquote attacking a child, which I thought was silly, considering I was just trying to spread awareness to other mod makers not to hire the guy. That was it. Um, this also got an entire subsection of the community cursing at me in Spanish, because I guess Terry just had a lot of friends in the FNS Spanish community. <laughs> Anyways, my memory's a little fuzzy on this next part, but I think what happened was they ended up releasing a second mod demo leak. The, the other two leakers, Larry and Terry. One of the Verse Retro devs watched through the second video and they were able to spot a Discord window popping up inside the recording, which contained a DM of Terry and Larry talking to each other about the recording and the leak. We basically just caught them red-handed there. However, this still doesn't explain how they got a hold of the source code when it was private. Here's where things get kind of interesting. Turns out, according to Barry, that he and Terry are good friends and Terry logged into Barry's GitHub, found the files, downloaded them, and leaked them. Good lord, what a story. <laughs> now some of you might be thinking that Barry just accidentally letting Terry onto his GitHub might have been intentional, 
But personally, I didn't see it that way, and truth be told, I was ready to move on and finally have some closure. Verse Retro 1.5 finally released, with overall positive reception, people loved the AU characters, and after a really stressful pre-release, it was finally over. But because this was so close, I didn't even really get to enjoy the release due to the drama and the leak. It was really hard to focus on the positives during that time, on top of everything else that had happened with part one, and everything before that. This is where I would really slow down on anything community related. I try to spread awareness, albeit not in the best way, about a potential mod leaker. They were technically leaking unreleased work to other mod makers, and also had their GitHub hacked by the actual leaker. However, I was met with friends of Barry insulting and mocking me instead. After IPU and all this drama was over, this is where I would really stop doing any sort of FNF content whatsoever. Remixes and FNF streams eventually died off completely, with a few exceptions. I still wanted to get part 2 out though. Uh, but the mod was still an unoptimized piece of garbage. Thus began the four to five month psych port update. In August of 2022, for Verse Retro Spectre's one year anniversary, I would end up releasing Verse Retro Icebreaker. This would bring the most drama yet. That's right. What happened was I ended up working with a smaller section of the Verse Retro team on a small 1.75 update for Kamix's birthday. We got most of the assets done in about a week, finished it, showed it to Kamix, and he loved it. Icebreaker was actually the most tame update, if I'm being honest, released out of the three. <laughs> it was basically a psych port, added a few new songs, and a phase two sprite for Kamix's Sona Ace. This was bittersweet because a mod update finally released where I could relax and breathe easy. No drama, no kids flagging stuff. However, it was also because the mod update did not do well at all by comparison to the other two updates. Part of me didn't mind it since it was a birthday present for Kamix anyways, but the other part of me went, damn, I should really get part two out soon. And then a year passed, and here we are. A quick honorable mention, this isn't in my script, but I wanted to bring it up anyways. Having to do like videos to advertise the makeshift plushies for Izzy and Mizzy were also pretty stressful. Um, despite me not doing too much directly because Kamix made the music and Tired Pink Panda made the animations, it was still really stressful just like making sure I was as loud and annoying at, about it as possible. Um, and I realized now that I didn't get too much other stuff done during this part. So I'm sure to a lot of people, it almost seemed like it was kind of corporate almost. Um, and I do apologize for that. It's literally just because of everything that happened. Um, it's a long like recovery process. However, I did want those plushies to be made so people could have them. So I ended up pushing myself during a time where I didn't want to be pushed and got Izzy out and he did fine. Mizzy was really stressful. Anyways, this might be part of, this might be the part of the video where you think I'm either going to tease something big regarding Verse Retro Part 2 or you might be thinking I'm about to cancel the mod. But truth be told, uh, I won't be doing either in this video. I did feel like these stories were important to share with you all though, so you can at least see my side of things and hopefully understand why part two has taken so long to release with it not even being shown on the horizon. I ended up using live streaming as kind of an escape from all of this for the better part of a year. I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, you see I can, I live stream like at least every other day. Uh, that was to run away from the community and kind of do my own thing. And I was happier with it for a while, but that also kind of faded away. And I guess I'm ready to try to like come back, not necessarily get back into the community because I never want to go back there again. <laughs> but I want to try to kind of get more productive again with content creation, which means less live streams. Um, so yeah though i will say i do still get people asking when part two is coming out on those streams and it just brings me back ptsd now but in all honesty um i'm also kind of in a sunk cost fallacy situation where i've put so much like money into the mod that canceling it at this point would just be really stupid to do um to give you guys just an idea on where the mod is at the moment, it's pretty much halfway done. Well, the update is. The update's halfway done. Part two. Um, pretty much all the sprites are done. We just need to make music. Me and Kamix need to make music. 
Music and programming are the biggest things holding it back. Once I'm more confident and motivated again, I can actually try to get back into it. However, because of that, I do have the unfortunate news that part two will be delayed to 2024. And I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. Remember, this is not my focus. In fact, it's been like the opposite of my focus for the better part of a year. I hope you can understand why. I hope these stories have kind of made you realize why I wasn't eager to get these out. Pair that with the fact that like, you know, OC mods aren't as popular as they used to be. Uh, people seem to only care about like the creepypasta stuff and the meme mods and you know, it's just, it's kind of sad to see. Um, what really got me into this community was seeing all these original characters who I've never seen before and seeing what they sound like, seeing what their music is like, seeing what their art is like, and it just got kind of replaced. And that's okay, but that's, you know, that's also unfortunate to see, personally, in my opinion. And then on top of all of this, I was diagnosed with type two diabetes in January of this year. So yeah, lots happened these past uh, two years. Took a huge blow to my self-confidence, my self-esteem, motivation. It just, it was a lot. Hopefully I can finally get back into it and I hope you guys are along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know this is a lot different than what I usually do. I've never read off a script this long before, but I did notice that uh, I said um a lot less than when I usually just wing it. So that's cool, but um, oh shit, I did it again. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching and until next time, see ya.